Christ and be glad in it. This is Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church, the Lord's Church for God's love and the word transform lives. And I'm so glad that you decided to join us in the sanctuary this morning or online for our morning worship. Let us stand, receive our deacons, and join them in our morning devotion. I will trust in the Lord. Yeah. Yes, I will trust in the Lord. Yeah, I trust in the Lord. Oh, I trust in the Lord. Yes, until I die. Yeah, I am going to stay the bad oh I stay on the bad yes I am gonna stay on the bad yes until I oh yeah I stay on the bad yeah Stay on the back church. I am gonna stay on the battlefield yeah, until I die. Good morning, Shiloh. Good morning. Today is the first Sunday, so today's church will become from Matthew 26, chapter. Verses 26 through 29. I say again, Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 through 29. Amen. If you're able, will you please stand for God's word? Amen. And it states, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and break it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Yeah. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood for the New Testament, which is shed for, the, for many for the remissions of sin. Yes, but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. I read you Matthew chapter 26, verses 20, 6 to 29. May God bless you to hear and do us of the most holy word. Amen. Shall we pray? Our God and our Heavenly Father. Again, you have a lot of few your children together together. And all we can say is thank you. I really look back behind us and see that you have brought us a mighty long way. But Father, we look at the altar this morning. We can stand and tell the world that we are on our way home. Thanking you for leading and guiding us this morning. Father, our blessing that you have brought upon us and able us to step out of our bed on our own two feet. Yes, Stand up on our own limb. Yes. Father, giving us a portion of our health and strength. Yes. We know that you're the doctor in the sick room. Yes. Father, because you have brought us a mighty long way. Yes, Father, I ask you to look around this deacon board this morning. Yes. You, it was a blessing to, to stand and listen at the chairman and say, look at this crowd. It's the, we know that the Lord is with us. Yes, but as we stand this morning, Father, it's two or three deacons that are missing. Yes, for their own reason, they are, they are missing. But we know that you've got your own strong arm protection around us. Yes, Father, look in on Donna Jackson this morning. Yes, Father, actually to bless Charles Mitchell this morning. Yes, Father, you know the one that are missing and you know why they are missing. Yes, you know the one that can be here, but they just won't. The one that want to be here and they just came. Yes. Father, but you're God and God all by yourself. Yes, you have laid the road for us. Yes. Father, now it's time for us to be obedient and follow and listen to the word of God. Yes. Father, you have been with us a mighty long time. Yes. And you brought us a mighty long way. Yes. Somebody that I land in the hospital this morning. Yes. Well, uh, calling on your name uh, and don't know you're in the part of the sin. Yes. 
Well, uh, now, Lord, now, Lord, when it's time to come for the end of my journey, why, uh, I can tell the world uh, that I'm on my way home. Anybody here ever had to call on the Lord? Uh, ain't God all right uh, now, Lord? Oh, Lord, uh, when it's all time have come, and uh, sometimes you call my name, uh, and I won't be able to answer. But uh, if you look down the road, you can say, uh, there's come a man that I call it on God. Oh, Lord, uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, now, thank you, Lord. Uh, when it comes to the end of our journey, uh, and no more the time, and no more walks to make, give us a seed in thy kingdom. <laughs> say, bless us, Lord. Bless each and every one under the sound of my voice. Can we call on God? Can we call on God? Lord, I know I've been. Lord, I, it's God of my life. I know I, I know I've been changed. Lord, I said I know I. You know what? God ain't the Lord. Good God of my life. I know the angels. Sign. I'm going to say it again. Lord, I. Oh, I. Lord, I. I know I. Yes, 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 Lord, I, I know I, I know the angel, Lord, uh, the God of my son, I know the angels, uh, you know what they said, you know what, I said, I said if you don't believe, that I have been redeemed, dark and angel, y'all. Yeah, Lord. You know what she told him? She just followed me down, all down to Jordan Street. Lord and angel. Sad. I know the angels. Cause God Almighty, I'm going to say this and I'm going to stop. She said, I step in the wall. Oh, sure. But the water was cold. Sign. She said, it chilled my body. Oh, it didn't harm my soul. Dark angel. Sad, Lord Angel. Sad, Moses. Lord, I. Anybody name in Sam? Just wave your hand. You said, I. Yeah, 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 Lord. I know, I'm Lord, I. Is it all right? I know. Lord, angel, Lord. Santa. I know the angel. Santa. I know the angel, Lord. Santa. Thank you. Thank you. This is the end of the shallow devotion.
Anybody came to give him some glory today? Because of who you are, I give him praise. Because. Jehovah, Judge Jehovah, Jireh, my provider. Because we can't 
feed our lives unless you are in it. So, so please, Lord, please, please with our bless the sick and the shut in. Not only in this church, but everywhere you want to bless. Because I know you are forgiving God. And you will forgive all of us for what we ask you for. Father, remember our pastor. Remember our deacons. Father, remember our deacons. Let them be the men you want them to be. And not the men I want them to be. Father, these and other blessings I've been asking your name. With the forgiveness of sin. In Jesus' name.
If you got a praise in your heart, go ahead and give him a praise. Come on, how many of you know that he's your savior? How many of you know he's your healer? How many of you know that he is your deliverer? Well, give him some praise. that he is a way maker. Come on, everybody in the middle, say it with us. Way maker, miracle word, promise, promise keeper, light in the dark. My God, my God, that is who you are. If you really believe that, come on, let's worship him and say to everybody, way maker, way maker, miracle word. No matter what you're going through, yes, he is. My God, my God, that is who you are. Oh, way maker, way maker, miracle word, promise. My God, my God, that is who you 
are here, you are here, turning, turning lives around. I worship, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, you are here, mending. Come on, just wave your hand in the building and come on, say it with us, everybody. Waymaker, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise. My God, that is. If that's your God, don't be ashamed to wave your hand and look up to heaven and say, Waymaker, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise. My God, that is. Come on, look up to heaven and tell them. Oh, waymaker, waymaker, miracle, promise. Do I have a witness that knows he's a way maker? Oh, way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise. My God, yeah. Somebody's thinking about a way he made for them when they didn't know what was going to happen. Oh, way maker, way maker, miracle, promise, promise, keep us my God, that. Open your mouth one more time, everybody, and say, Waymaker, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the dark. My God, that is who you are. Put your hands together for that Waymaker. Open up your mouth. Come on, let's call Waymaker, Promise Keeper, my God, my God, that is who you are. Come on and lift your hands, hey, Waymaker, Promise Keeper, yeah. If it get good to you, they, this is what they do at the wall. When they're praying to the Lord, they just rock. Waymaker, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on with me, hey, waymaker. Come on, church. Tell him who he is. He's the he's a light in the darkness. Yes. Yeah. Waymaker. Come on and worship him. Promise keeper. My God, that is who you are. Come on, let's sing it one more time. Waymaker. Promise keeper. That's how I know him. That is, that is, that is, come on, that is, that is who you are. That is who you 
are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Come on, let's give him a hand clap of praise in this place. Come on and give him a hand clap of praise in this place. Come on and give him a hand clap of praise in this place. If he's made any kind of way for you, we serve a God that makes a way out of no way. <laughs> yeah, when everybody else can't see a thing, God makes a thing. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we acknowledge you. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we magnify you. If I had 10,000 tongues, it would not be enough to worship and bless your name. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Yes, you've been so good to me. You've been so good to me that I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. Yes! The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? What shall I worry about? What shall bother me? For if the Lord is on my side, yes, if the Lord is on my side, yes, yes, yes. Sometimes we got to remind ourselves who's on our side. And if the Lord is on your side, the Bible says, greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to fear. You just have to walk in faith. Faith cometh by hearing. And what should you be hearing? Hearing by the word of God. Glory to God this morning. Father, we come in your presence right now. Thanking you for everything. Thanking you for everything. Thanking you for goodness and for mercy. Thanking you, almighty God, that when we could not take care of ourselves, oh, you were the physician to come in the room. That when others were practicing medicine, you mastered medicine. Lord, I thank you, Almighty God, that your hands still heal. I thank you, Almighty God, that if we can't, if we can't get next to you, your word shall heal us anyway. I thank you, Almighty God, that no door is closed to me. But if I stand at the door and I ask and I seek and I, the door shall come open. Yes, if I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all things Somebody said, all things, all things, all things, the little things, the big things, all things shall be added unto me. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for everything. You are my everything. You are my everything. You're not, you're not my last stop. You're my first stop. If I'm coming to anybody, I'm coming to you first. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Is he a way maker? Is he a way maker? Is he a way maker? I want to be in a room with some people that know he's a way maker. I want to be in a room with some people that know he's a God that can. Not that a God that might, but a God that will. I need to be in a room with some folks that know that they know that they know that he is God and there is no other. Yes! Yeah! Yes! I've seen some things. I've experienced some things. And I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that he's a way maker. Yes, he is. Yes. When the world says no, Jesus can still say yes. Glory to God. Yes. Let, let, me, let me get into this. I, I just when, when God has been so good to you when folks think they got you in a bag when folks think they got you against the wall 
the Lord will stop by and give you a way of escape. I'm here to tell you that he, there's no other God that's greater than him. There's no other God that's better than him. There's no other God that hears you like he hears you. Even when you don't open your mouth, he says, I hear you, baby. I hear you in your mumbling. I hear you in your crying. I hear you in your moans. I hear you in your groans. I hear you. Not only does he hear us, he sees us. He sees us when nobody else can see us. When we try to put makeup on to cover it, he says, I see you. When we try to dress up and we smooth our hair and we get all trimmed up, he says, I see you. I, I know what you're going through. I know it was hard for you to get up. But I thank God that you pressed your way this morning. I thank God that you pressed your way this morning. I thank God that you came into the assembly of the saints. God is going to bless us today. He's going to bless us today. If you would turn with me in the book of Luke, the book of Luke, the eighth chapter, the book of Luke, the eighth chapter, and file down into the 43rd verse. The book of Luke, the eighth chapter, the 43rd verse, and we're going to look from the 43rd verse to the 48th verse. The book of Luke, the eighth chapter, beginning with the 43rd verse. And we're going to go for the 43rd verse to the 48th verse. And when you get there, could you say amen? amen. When you get there, could you say amen? amen? The book of Luke. The book of Luke. Yes. Lord, help me this morning. Help me this morning. Preach your word. Teach your word. Make it plain. Make it clear. Lord, let the fire that may have simmered down in us come into a roar this morning. That when we step out of this place, folks may touch us and say, you, you warm. And we tell them, no, I'm on fire. You warm, but no, 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 no. You don't understand. I've been in the fire and the Lord has blessed me. I went in one way, but I came out another way. We serve a God that does that. That when you go into your trouble, folks may see you go in one way, but if you stay with God, you'll come out another way because he's that type of God. He's a God that does new things, brand new mercies every day. Yes, glory to God. So I want to look at Luke, the eighth chapter, starting with the 43rd verse. And I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And the word of God reads, now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who has spent all of her livelihood on physicians, on doctors and could not be healed by any of them. And so she came from behind Jesus and, and touched the border of the hem of his garment. And the Bible says, yeah. and immediately her flow of blood, it stopped. Yeah. And Jesus said, in the midst of the crowd, who touched me? But Jesus said, his disciples were perplexed because they said, Master, uh, the multitude is all about you impresses you and you say who touched me but Jesus said somebody, somebody. touched me for I perceive power going out from me now when the woman saw that she was not hidden she came trembling and falling down before him she declared to him in the presence of all of the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately and he said to her after he heard her story daughter be of good cheer your faith 
has made you whole. Your faith has made you well. Somebody said your faith. Your faith has made you well. And then he says go in peace. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing, reading, and doing of his holy word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In, in the text, in the text, we see Jesus and he's, 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 he's on his way to Jairus' house. He's on his way to Jairus' house. And Jairus was a synagogue ruler. He, he, he was the preacher in the area. He, he, he was over the synagogue. And, 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 he, and he had called upon Jesus because he had heard about him. He had called upon Jesus to come and see about not only him but his daughter. He called him to his house where his 12 year old daughter was laying deathly ill. Uh, she was in need of, of desperate healing. So while, while Jesus is moving through the crowd that his celebrity had created, a woman with an issue of blood shows up. And not only does she show up, she, she, she has had 12 years of this medical condition. She's had 12 years of this medical condition. And, and I don't know what specific condition it was. Uh, uh, but, but many speculate one thing or another. But in the end, her medical condition, it isolated her. It isolated her. It isolated her. Uh, it, many, uh, it, when we look at this in, in, in the Leviticus, the 15th chapter, the 19th verse, it isolated her because the rabbinical law, Mosaic law, said that if you have issues such as this, if a woman has a discharge, uh, her discharge being blood from her body, she shall remain in her impurity for seven days. And, and, and not only that, Whoever touches her shall be unclean until evening. This was a problem for her. This was a problem. Uh, because if you have a condition, if you have regular menstruation, uh, uh, you know that it has a season and then it's over. This woman had a blood condition that she couldn't tell when it was starting or when it was stopping. And so if she could not tell when it was starting or when it was stopping, uh, she, because of rabbinical law, Mosaic law, she could not do what she normally could do. Simple things like going to the store. Simple things like fellowshipping with her sisters and with her brothers and with her mama and her daddies. Simple things. and not, not even outside of the house. She couldn't do nothing inside the house. Amen. And, and so this was a problem. I, I don't know if she was married. I, I, I don't know that. I don't know if she was married. But her condition impeded her, uh, if she was, her relations with her husband. Not only with, not only with pillow talk. That's what we're going to call it. Not only with pillow talk. <laughs> not only with pillow talk but also in their very home for he would be labeled unclean by just mere association with her and, and would be put out of the community just like she was put out of the community in intervals of seven days how and you had to wonder you know, how was this family functioning? How, how could they shop? How could they, how could they go about their everyday activities? When would they commune with their families? What was going on in any and in every day? They would have to check to make sure, is this a good day or this, is this a bad day? Uh, uh, that not only could they not associate with their family, they couldn't go to church. They couldn't go to the synagogue. Uh, and so they remained in perpetual non-fellowship from the world they knew. Everything that they knew had to stop. And not only did it have to stop one day, it stopped for 12 years. For 12 years, she had to check to see if today was a good day for her to go out 
and fellowship. Can you imagine her being on pins and needles? Even when it started off a good day, it may have ended a bad day. Even when she was on the way somewhere, something else could have happened. And so her, her life was just up and down and, and tossing and turning. And, uh, and, 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 and she was just in a bad situation. Now, I want you to see something. I want you to see something in the scripture. Uh, Jarius, who was the ruler of the synagogue, uh, his daughter was 12 years old. She had lived the same amount of time that the woman who came to Jesus had been inflicted 12 years with her medical condition. Can I tell you something? Can I, can I tell you something? Uh, let me tell you, God has a way to humble you. know what kind of person Jarius was I'm sure he was just doing his job and not allowing the woman to come into the synagogue to hear the word of the living God on the Shabbat on the Sabbath but while you focused on her uncleanness her unfitness now your child is dying she's somebody's daughter you have your daughter and you focus it on one person and trouble is brewing all back behind you 12 for 12 and so here it is God, the bible doesn't drop that that type of word like that uh that's not a coincidence that was purposeful 12 years for 12 years now how are you dealing with her and preventing her from coming to me. Yeah. Now you calling me. To come to you. <laughs> Listen. Church. Be careful. How you treat people. Because your day is coming. Be careful. Who you put your hands on. Be careful. Who you put your mouth on. Be careful. Because your day is coming. It may not look like it's your day today. Jairus never saw 12 years later that his daughter would be in need of the same man the woman with the issue of blood was coming towards. He was trying to rush Jesus to his house. But Jesus in his wisdom, in his goodness, you know, he can, sometimes you can, you can high step to a place and be and be quick about it other times you just linger because it, and i believe the lord lingered in the crowd uh, because he was like something is about ready to go down and you know what uh, i think i think somebody's on their way and, and 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 so he lingered in the crowd you know you 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 may have a, a i want to tell somebody you may have a different well than me but we both need water yeah. Yeah, we, we, we both need water. Uh, they both, the woman and Jairus, Jairus needed the Savior. One waited and the other broke line because some matters just can't wait. I can see the woman with the issue of blood standing on the outskirts of the crowd. Contemplating whether she should go home or whether she should go forward. Will Jesus treat her like other men of God and see her and send her home will he detest her will he rebuke her for coming in the condition that she was in will the crowd prevent her from having an audience with our Lord and Savior will her action be no effect due to his potential of refusing to help her see when you have a scarlet letter, when you are a designated reject, it's hard to see yourself or deem yourself worthy of grace and be accepted. Because you live so long outside of the crowd that it's hard 
to come back in. What am I saying to you? We have church family that we have not seen in this house since the pandemic. Some of them have been dealing with some stuff privately or been gone so long that they're ashamed to step back in uh, because, because they don't want to hear the person and you know who that person is. You might be the person. I don't know. I, I'm just preaching. Uh, they don't want to see the person or hear the person that will say, uh, well, now, where you been? Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you got to it before I did. Where you been? I, can, I, can I help somebody? That's not the best question to ask. When somebody been gone and you don't know why they've been gone. Can I give you a better? Can I give you a better way? Uh, how can you, why can't you say I miss you oh it's so good to see you come here and give me a hug you look good girl good black don't crack boy you shine up like a new penny why not why not compliment why not encourage why not uplift instead of bring them down lower it was hard enough for them to get to the house don't make it difficult for them to stay in the so so she makes her decision she makes her decision and she decides to crawl she decides to crawl she was standing up she could walk that wasn't her issue she made a conscious decision to crawl and so she decided to crawl on her hands and knees and hope that when she, when she got to him, it would be better than what she imagined. Jesus was in the middle of a crowd of all kinds of people touching him. But only one touched him with expectant faith. <laughs> there are all kinds of people that come to the house. But there are select people that come to the house expecting to be blessed. That's a whole different type of crowd. Jesus could work in a crowd that was expecting to be blessed. Jesus said he, he went to his hometown and he couldn't do nothing in his hometown because nobody expected anything from him. But if you come in the house of the Lord and you expect something from the Savior, he will give you just what you need. He'll give you what you need. Sometimes before healing, he says, I got to heal you from the inside out. Uh, I got to deal with your stuff before I can give you the healing. You don't understand that your stuff is preventing your healing. And if you deal with your stuff, if you deal with your sin, which is the root of your physical manifestation, then it will loose this thing and you can be set free. God always deals with the inside out. That's a good physician. He doesn't look at the surface level and say, and look at the leaves and say what, what it is. You may have, uh, you may have this, but uh, it's, it's, it's the trauma that you went through in life that has manifested to this. Amen, somebody. And so she came, she came expecting. She came, she came for business. She came for business. She came for business. That while, while they were talking about Jesus, she was being about Jesus. The crowd was talking about him. But she sat on the outskirts of the crowd. And she contemplated, is this my day? Everybody's around him. Will he send me away? Everybody's around him. Will the crowd turn me away? Everybody's around him. Uh, and, and I know he can do it. I know he can do it. But I, I'm, I'm afraid that I'm going to face the same rejection that I face in the world with my Lord and with my Savior. Some people don't come to him because they think that the people that's supposed to be the Christians, that we, we sometimes we can be the worst models. For a loving God. 
And so if people, they begin to connect you with him. And, and if you're not representing him right, you may be the person that's blocking somebody else from seeing him. You're supposed to be a witness. You're supposed to be an ambassador. And the ambassador should do what the king has sent him to do. What the king has sent her to do. Am I, am, am I, am I clear about that thing? You see, you see, we have to make sure that we are representing the Savior correctly. That's right. And we have to make sure that we're not stopping somebody else from getting to the Lord. She came for business. While they were talking about him, she was about Jesus. She was about Jesus. And, and, and she touched him. Listen, watch. She touched him. Uh, according to the word of God. Yeah. I don't know how many people know that. She, she just didn't come and sit at the edge of the crowd and look at him uh, ignorantly. She didn't look at him with a lack of knowledge. She looked at him because the word of God said something about him. She couldn't go to the synagogue. Watch this. She couldn't go to church. So she sat at home and she studied his word. Yeah. And she, 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 she did some research about who he was. And so she sat at home and she studied her word because the preacher wouldn't come to her. So she had to study the word in order to meet Jesus where he was. And, and she had studied his word long enough that, that she, had, she got up the carriage. And she put her clothes on and she, she, she smoothed out her hair to try to look as presentable as possible. Even with this medical condition, she moved her way to Jesus. But see, you got to understand that she prepped before she got to him. She studied and she was familiar with the prophecy that was in Malachi 4 and 2. Can I read you the prophecy? The prophecy said, the prophecy said, but, but to you who fear my name. The son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. What does that mean? He will rise with healing in his wings. Well, a Hebrew man, I brought something here. A Hebrew man would have around his neck and would ascend across his back. Uh, a, 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 this is called a talit. Or a prayer shawl. And they would drape this around them. Y'all yeah. may have seen yeah. this. Yeah. And so when, when, when David said. You shall hide me in the shelter of your tabernacle. He was talking about prayer. <laughs> and he said you shall hide me. In the shelter of your tabernacle. And he was talking about prayer. That between in this place. It's just me and God. And God alone. And so in this place. I am in the secret place. You shall hide me. And, 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 and when, when Jesus was walking around as a Hebrew man. He said that she, she crawled and she, she walked. And, and she said that. And the, she read the Bible. She says where is the healing? And the healing was in his wings. When you. Can I, can I, when you throw it across your back. And you spread your wings. She came. <laughs> Glory to God. She came. And she touched. The hem of his garment. Why the hem? Because the Bible says. In the hem. Will be. They call these tazits. And there's 613 strings. Intertangled together. Because of 613 commandments. And so this represents the word of God. Because as she was at home studying the word of God, she prepped herself that while everybody was standing to touch him in his face, she got low. She humbled herself. She crawled. She stooped. She got down. She moved. While everybody was standing, she got on her elbows with her eyes on the hymn. There was all kinds of hymns, but there was only one special hymn. There was only one him that would deliver her. There was only one him that her salvation rested in. There was only one him that was connected to him. The him that she knew. Oh, I'm glory to God. 
She walked it. While everybody was like, who's at my feet? She said, excuse me. I'm making my way to him. Excuse me. Oh, Lord, she's here. Excuse me. Oh, she shouldn't be here. Excuse me. Oh, she should have stayed at home. Excuse me. And she kept on. Till she got to the hymn. And because she studied and knew his word, she didn't have to wait on Jesus to touch her. She touched him. She touched him. She touched him. She touched him. She touched him so in faith. Everybody was touching him. Even his disciples said, Lord, everybody's touching you. He said, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Somebody touched me. Well, 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 who? Lord, everybody's touching you. Yeah. You know, he, everybody, he, he in one of his spells, you know. He, 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 every, every, Lord, everybody's touching you. No, 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 no. Somebody came expecting. Somebody came in faith. Somebody know me that they know that they know that they know. Everybody's trying to find out about me. But somebody in this crowd knows me for themselves. Somebody knows me for themselves. And so he said, who touched me? Who touched me? And, 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 he, and he, he said, now I got to get specific. I got to get specific. He says, uh, somebody touched me. For I perceived power going out from me. Now I'm in this crowd. Everybody know who I am. But not everybody believe that I am. How many people know that you can know who he is. But you don't believe who he is. All kind of folk come to church and they know who he is. But there's somebody in this place that believes who he is. And so, and she, she came believing who he was. And, and, and he said, somebody touched me. Because power, power went out of me. He's, can, I, can, I, can I say something? Faith is a principle that God honors automatically. You don't have to wait. Faith is the key that unlocks the door. All you need is faith and you don't have to wait in line faith will move you to the front of the line faith will do things that other folk can't do faith will make the impossible possible faith shall make the blood flow your way faith 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 is a principle Jesus didn't need to see her he didn't need to speak to her he didn't need to touch her because she had faith Power moved from, power moved, power moved from him to him. Uh, power moved, not, it moved from him to him to her. And, and, and she didn't have to wait no longer. Uh, she waited for 12 long years. Waited to have doctors tell her no. Waited to have doctors say there's nothing more than I can do. Waited to hear doctors say, well, you know, there's new medicines happening every day and we might be able to do better tomorrow. But I want to tell somebody that you got to have faith. If you have to crawl in. <laughs> if, you have to, if you have to crawl in, glory to God. If you have to roll in, glory to God. If you have to, if you have to scoot in. Don't be concerned about how you look. Just get to Jesus. Uh, you got to get to him. It don't matter how you got to him. It don't matter how you feel. Uh, just get to him the best way you can. It'll be worth your wait. Uh, her faith increased from reading and believing God's word. She didn't wait for Jesus to come to her for healing. She didn't wait for him. She didn't wait for him. She broke the line. She skipped the line and went where others did not go. Where others said, I, I, you know what? It ain't, you don't have to do all that to get your blessing. You don't have to lift your hands in the sanctuary to get your blessing. Can I tell you something? I battle with my hands in the air. I worship with my hands in the air. What you don't understand is I'm battling 
demonic powers as I lift my hands in the sanctuary as I call upon the name that is above every name because I know that every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord demons tremble at the name of Jesus she came not with standing pride <laughs> Uh, and so I have to ask somebody, how bad do you want it? <laughs> how, how bad do you want it? How do you really want to get well? Do you really want to be delivered? Do you really want the, the blessings of the Lord? Do you really want to be showered with his grace? Do you really want eternal life? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? And so she came not with standing pride, but with a humbling crawl. She crawled until she recognized his hymn from other hymns. She crawled with blood trailing all behind her. She, she, she couldn't even be in the crowd because the law forbade it, but she broke the line anyway. And you have a witness in this place. Sometimes you gotta break the line to get where you wanna go with the Lord. Sometimes you can't wait no more. You gotta say, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I gotta get to him. I know you've been waiting, but excuse me. I gotta get to Jesus. She couldn't wait no longer. She couldn't wait no longer for her healing was in his wings. The doctors couldn't help her. So she came as a last resort. She, didn't, she, she needed to be to him as quickly as possible. She saw what he did for others. Maybe he could do it for her. So she broke the line to get to Jesus' doctor's office, cut through the line, went in to get the balm of Gilead. Her faith made her whole. Faith is a substance. Somebody say substance. Somebody say substance. Substance. Faith is a substance. It's a peculiar thing because it's a word, but it has substance. I know there's some science folk in here. If something has substance, it can be touched. And so faith is a peculiar thing that even though you can speak it in the, in the spiritual world, it's tangible. How can you have something tangible in a spiritual world? That faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's tangible, it's tangible, it's tangible. In the kingdom, faith is tangible. It creates, it acts, it moves. Faith opens the door. The miracle was wonderful. I'm about to close. The miracle was wonderful. It was wonderful that 12 years had come to an end. The miracle was wonderful. The healing was phenomenal. But the best thing, the best thing that happened, the icing on the cake, was when Jesus said, daughter, <laughs> daughter, uh, uh, be of good cheer. Your, your, look, 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 look. All these folks stand around. Look, let me listen. Your faith made you whole. And this was the icing on the cake. This was the icing on the cake. It was three, three words. Three words. There was an the icing on the cake. He said, he said, go in peace. He said, go in peace. Peace. That is over. Peace that takes the place of worry. Peace that has taken the place of loneliness. Peace that has usurped my pain. Peace that passes all understanding. Peace that made the waters be still. Peace that when he finished it on the cross, he said, now peace. Peace is, is over, is finished. The wedge between the father and his children is over because the blood has taken away the sins of the world. The Bible says he died on the cross and with his death he made peace between me and the father. My blood can't make peace. Her blood couldn't make peace. Like the widow's blood condition. It separates me from God for I was born in sin. But thanks be unto God. Glory to God. That there were my blood separates me. His redeeming blood pulls me in. Thanks be unto God that I'm not separated by my sin. But he looked past my fault. And he supplied my need. The Bible says he was bruised. 
for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, his stripes, his stripes, we are healed. I come to tell somebody, press your way. Don't let nobody stop you from being in the house. Press your way. The devil just don't want you here. Press your way and touch the hem of his garment. He'll meet you right where you need to be met. And when he says, who touched me? Don't be shy. Say, our Lord, our Lord have touched you. Glory to God. Praise be to the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place. The hymn, the hymn, the hymn, she touched him where, she said, I'm going to touch you where the word is. I'm going to touch you where the word is represented. And so she came and she touched him. She didn't touch him anywhere. She touched him where the word was. So what am I saying to you? Those of you that are here today, if we could stand on our feet. Those of you that are here today. They said, you know what? I'm that, I'm, that, I'm that person that was like, I don't know if I'm going to go today. I don't know if church is my thing. Look. Church may not be your thing, but is the Lord your thing? Because if the Lord is your thing, then his family is your thing. We're not perfect. Everybody in here is walking by faith and not by sight. Everybody in here is damaged goods. Even the preacher is damaged goods. That's why I preach the way I preach because I realize that I'm damaged goods. And if it was not for the blood, if it was not for the Lord on my side, where would I be? I thank God. And if you're willing to touch his hymn this morning. You can come down and be a part of the family. And you can test the him And be saved yourself. If you confess with your mouth. And believe in your heart. That Jesus Christ died and he rose from the grave. That he is the son of God. You too shall be saved. Oh, is there one today? Brother, he... Amen. Giving time. The time of giving, yes, Sister Brazelton, the time we celebrate and we honor God. We give to God. We give through the church to God, amen? That God may use us as a church family to do the work he's called us to do. Praise the Lord. And we thank you for your giving. We don't walk around like we used to be. The tithing box is in the hallway. Uh, you can mail it in. You can drop it in the mailbox. You can drop it in the tithing box. Or if you still have your offering in your hand right now, you can put it in the basket at the end of church as we depart. Amen? Amen. You can also give online with Givelify. Amen? Anybody know what Givelify is? I know there's some people who know what Givelify is because some of you have been giving uh, consistently on Givelify, and we thank you for your giving. Amen? Amen. That's our online giving platform. Praise the Lord. And so if you got your offering, we're going to bless the offering right now. If you've already given, you can lift your hand. Father God, we come right now and we say thank you. Thank you for the love that you've placed into the hearts of your people to give. Thank you for the love that they express through their giving through the church, Father. We simply ask you to bless both the gift and the giver. Multiply it, magnify it, make it sufficient for the work you've placed into our hands, Father. We love you. We honor you. We know you're able to do all things miraculously. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen? Let us stand. Father God, we come right now. We say thank you. Thank you for your love, your kindness, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for all you're doing at Shiloh. 
and in the kingdom and how you're using Shiloh in the kingdom. Using us to, to reach other people with this health and wellness, Father. A message of health and wellness and how the church is the center of health and wellness. You not only wanted us to be healed, you want us to be whole. You said, I'm able. Just come to me. We are the shining lights in this community. And we say thank you for allowing the light at Shiloh to shine in this community to reach those who are in need of spiritual healing, physical healing, mental and emotional and behavioral health healing, Father. Because we know that you are the one who truly heals and makes us whole. You're even able to make us financially whole, Father. In the midst of losing our jobs, in the midst of losing our homes, you still give us shelter. You still give us transportation. You make a way out of no way. You truly are a way maker. And we say thank you. We thank you for that word today, Father. We thank you for the word from Reverend Floyd. And we thank you for Reverend Floyd and his service. Continue to bless him and his family, Father. As we come, Father, to depart from this place, but never to depart from your very presence. May the love of Christ, the grace of God, the communion of the sweet Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each and every believer. And all of the believers said, Amen, Amen, Amen. 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 In the words of Christ, go in peace.